unknown pleasure points in a woman's body, erogenous zones. Activating the right areas on a woman's body can significantly enhance pleasure. The human body is a fascinating entity, with much still to be discovered. These often overlooked spots can arouse a woman and lead to intense orgasms, and in some instances, even multiple ones. Erogenous zones in female, tips for men to find them. Although sexual arousal is often highly personal, most people agree on certain areas that spark their desire. These erogenous zones are closely connected to feelings of sexual arousal. Stimulating them can amplify pleasure and enhance sexual satisfaction. The key to discovering these zones is through open communication with your partner, experimenting together, and then discussing and refining your experiences. 9. Unexpected Erogenous Zones in Women Body here are some hidden pleasure points, or erogenous zones, in a woman's body that you should remember for your next intimate experience. 1. Ears. The ears contain 120 acupressure points, making them a key area to focus on during intimacy. Gently biting, caressing, licking, or blowing into the ears can significantly arouse a woman. If you have a way with words, Whispering seductive, provocative things into her ear can further amplify the sexual energy throughout her body. 2. Wrists. The wrists are often overlooked as an erogenous zone, but they shouldn't be. With a thin layer of skin, the wrists are highly sensitive, making them a potent pleasure point. When kissed or gently nibbled, they can arouse a woman significantly. 3. Nape of the neck. This erogenous zone is rich in nerve endings, making it highly sensitive and crucial for enhancing arousal. Kissing and licking the nape of a woman's neck creates a tingling sensation that intensifies her sexual arousal. Therefore, this area deserves special attention during foreplay. 4. Lower back. Incorporate this sensitive erogenous zone into your foreplay routine as massaging the lower back is highly stimulating for a woman. Beyond boosting arousal, it also relaxes the pelvic muscles, leading to smoother and more enjoyable intercourse. 5. Inner Thighs Located tantalizingly close to the genitals, the inner thighs are an often overlooked pleasure point on a woman's body. Kissing and licking this erogenous zone can quickly arouse her. During foreplay, you can heighten her excitement by gradually moving from the inner thighs to the clitoris. 6. Back of Neck The neck is one of the best erogenous zones in a woman, acting as a hot spot due to its extreme sensitivity, abundance of blood vessels, and association with vulnerability. Gentle, lingering caresses here can be especially effective. 7. Pelvis Focusing some attention on her pelvis is a great idea, but you'll need to resist the temptation to move directly to her vagina. Similar to teasing her inner thighs, kissing and licking around her pelvis will build anticipation and excitement. Keep her wanting more by occasionally shifting your focus to other areas of her body before returning to this spot. 8. Behind her knees. This area is often overlooked by many men when trying to stimulate a woman, but it's actually quite sensitive. Gently caressing the back of her knee while you're in a public setting can build anticipation for when you get home. Make sure to give this special spot additional attention once you're alone together. 9. The arm. Another erogenous zone on a woman's body is just below the shoulder, on the outer part of her arm, between the elbow and shoulder. This area is highly sensitive and can be as stimulating as the clitoris. When you locate that specific pressure point and press it directly, holding it for 10 seconds or more, it can trigger a powerful wave of pleasure that may lead her to experience orgasmic breath and a profound sensation throughout her body. Why people prioritize sexual relationships over emotional ones? In today's world, where shallow expressions of love and broken trust are common, many people are leaning more towards sexual relationships. There is a growing focus on fulfilling physical desires while leaving love and emotional connection on the back burner. 
The fear of commitment and rejection are factors influencing this shift in attitudes towards relationships. It has become easier to engage in intimacy without emotional attachment. Here are a few reasons why people often prioritize sexual relationships over emotional ones. 1. Lack of emotional bond. As individuals grow up, they may experience a lack of emotional bonds with family or friends. The formative years are crucial in shaping a young person's personality. Weak friendships and feelings of isolation can lead to a reluctance to open up emotionally and mentally to others. 2. Partners' Preferences It takes two to make a relationship work. If one person isn't interested in an emotional or committed connection, their partner is left with two options, either to leave the relationship or to remain in a sexual arrangement, hoping it might evolve into something deeper. The partner's preference may be influenced by past experiences or current life circumstances. 3. Acceptance of premarital sex. There are few rules or regulations governing sex, and premarital sex is widely accepted. Many view this as a chance to enjoy the benefits of a relationship without assuming responsibility. It allows for the freedom to avoid commitment while having multiple partners simultaneously. 4. Why choose one? Commitment and emotional relationships involve just two people. In contrast, sexual relationships are perceived differently. Many people now find being with only one person to be dull, leading them to prefer sexual connections over romantic ones. The allure of multiple options often seems more appealing. 5. Commitment takes time. On a positive note, people today often focus on fully getting to know each other before making a commitment to a future together. Exploring and understanding one another are prioritized before entering into a serious relationship. It's crucial to know exactly what you want before settling down, and exploration is key to gaining that understanding. 6. Is there trust in us? Nowadays, trust is often limited to family, with few extending it to others. Emotional relationships rely heavily on trust and compassion, and difficulties with trust may stem from past traumatic experiences or other mental health issues. Six emotional stages one goes through during or after divorce. Everyone handles divorce in their own way. Some may feel emotionally vulnerable during this time, while others might feel relief at no longer being with someone who doesn't align with their own energy. As with any grief, it's normal to experience a range of emotions during a divorce. It's important to remember that you will eventually heal and thrive. Here are six emotional stages that many people experience during or after a divorce. 1. Shock. During a divorce, you may experience a whirlwind of emotions all at once. Anger, rage, sadness, and tears. You might find yourself torn between trying to save the marriage and ending it. With everything happening simultaneously, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and unable to fully process the shock of what's unfolding in your life. 2. Denial. In such circumstances, it can be incredibly challenging to grasp and accept that this is actually happening to you. You may have trouble believing that your relationship has reached an impasse. Despite your efforts to resolve the issues, you find it difficult to move past them. Denial often becomes one of the most powerful emotions you experience during the divorce process. 3. Depression. Depression is a common risk during a divorce. Amidst the turmoil, you might struggle to manage your emotions and thoughts, which can become overwhelming. As a result, you may experience intense, unbearable pain and find yourself breaking down in response to any challenges that arise. 4. Hope. Deep down, you may still harbor hopes of salvaging your marriage. Despite how difficult things have become, you cling to the desire to make things work. The person who wants to stay and try again is often the one who is truly attached to the idea of reconciliation, regardless of the obstacles. 5. Letting go. At this stage, 
you begin to accept that ending the marriage may be for the best. You come to terms with the realization that there's nothing more you can do to salvage it after everything that has transpired. While you might still experience moments of breakdown, you're starting to embrace the situation as it is, accepting whatever comes next. 6. Acceptance. Gradually, you begin to accept that you are going through a divorce, recognizing that it's a normal part of life. You stop dwelling on the past and start looking forward to new experiences. Now, you focus on embracing a fulfilling life, free from the baggage of previous relationships. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like subscribe and turn on the notification bell, so you don't miss any new videos. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comment section down below, and feel free to stay and enjoy it until the end. Also make sure to check out our next highlighted video, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.